Hello and welcome to another lockdown with Matt Gilson and, and me, Michael Farry. When we started these, we thought there'd just be a few of them. That normality, whatever that is, would return quite quickly. But now it looks like this could go on for quite a while. So we're enjoying doing these every week and we hope they bring some pleasure to the people who watch them, especially those who are in homes nursing homes. And thank you for watching. We'll start this week with another excerpt from the Temple Bar open air concert with Matt singing. And I love the way that in spite of all the noise around him and people moving here and there, Matt still gives a great performance. A natural performer, a natural entertainer. Well done Matt. And here he comes. And I was on the calendar and I was on Austin Mahar. song my father used to sing. It's a humor sort of ditty. I don't know what key it's in, Mary, but it doesn't really matter. You can play the cracks at the go. I was driving to the fair on me outside car. When I met sweet Kitty Clare on the road to Castle Bar, she was walking, I must state, and says I to her, O oh, Kate, would you like to take a seat on the outside car? Yes, said she, I'll take a lift on your own side car. And I'll thank you for the gift, for it's miles to Castle Bar. And says she, if you don't mind, and the pony is resigned, sure I'll drive you like the wind on your outside car. Now when Kitty took the reins on the outside car, Sure, me heart near bursted veins on the road to Castle Bar. How she drove the little beast, did I mind not in the least? I was anchored to her waist on the outside car. Now, an awkward place to kiss is the outside car. But I tried when she said yes Smile, on the road to Castle Bar. <laughs> oh, be blessings on the day. Now the neighbors all do say, there goes Mrs. Matt O'Shea in her own side car. Come on, give. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much, Mary. We've had a number of storms this year and recently there's been quite a bit of wind. So I thought I'd start this week by reading some poems about wind. And the first one is by an English poet, Lucy Aiken, who died in 1864. So she was a Victorian poet. She was born in the north of England, but she lived most of her adult life in London. Her father was a doctor and a historian. Her aunt had written books for children. So Lucy herself was well educated privately. She was able to read French, and Italian and Latin. And she wrote history and biography. She wrote a novel and she wrote quite a number of poems for children. So this poem is by Lucy Aiken and it's called Which Way does the wind blow? Which way does the wind blow? And where does he go? He rides o'er the water, he rides o'er the snow. He blows and he tosses the leaves from the tree, as when you look upward, you plainly can see. From what place he comes, to what place he goes, there's no one can tell you, there's no one who knows. The second Wind poem is by another female English poet called Christina Rossetti. Now, she died a little bit later than Lucy. She died in 1894. 
She wrote lots of poetry for adults and for children. Her most famous one is probably Goblin Market. She also wrote the words of that well-known Christmas carol, In the Bleak Midwinter. But this poem is called The Wind. The Wind by Christina Rossetti. Who has seen the wind? Neither I nor you. But when the leaves hang trembling, the wind is passing through. Who has seen the wind? Neither you nor I. But when the trees bow down their heads, the wind is passing by. <clears throat> Greetings, Michael, and hello, everybody. Uh, this is a song that I learned from a fellow called Jimmy Malone, a great old friend of mine, when I was a child. And uh, there is no offence intended to members of the distaff side of your family, Michael, or anybody else's family either. Talking of distaff, that happens to be a word that I picked up from Garrett Fox. Who remembers Garrett Fox? Me, the Chronicle reporter. He used to use that word years ago. And uh, I'm sure you'll find it on Google if you're not familiar with it. Anyway. <clears throat> There was an old man from Kellyburn's Braes, right for rightful titty for lay. There was an old man from Kellyburn's Braes, and he had a wife was the plague of his days, which are right for lol, titty for lol, fal da la 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 So the devil he came for the man with the plough, right for rightful titty for lay. The devil he came for the man with the plough, Saying, I've come for your wife and I'm taking her now with your right for lol. Titty for lol. Fal da la 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 So the devil he hoisted her up on his back. Right for right for titty for lay. The devil he hoisted her up on his back. And landed at hell's or door with a crack with your right for lol. Titty for lol. Fal da la 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 There were two little devils a playing with chains. Right for rightful Teddy for lay. There were two other devils a playing with chains. So she lifted her stick and she scattered her brains. Which are right for all. Teddy for all. Fall the la 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 There were two other devils a playing with a ball. Right for rightful Teddy for lay. There were two other devils a playing with a ball. They said, Take her away or she'll murder us all. Which are right for all. Teddy for all. So the devil he hoisted her up on his back, right for right for Teddy for lay. The devil he hoisted her up on his back, and back to the old man hurried the pack with your right for lol, Teddy for lol. Said he, me good man, here's your wife safe and well, right for right for Teddy for lay. Said he, me good man, here's your wife safe and well. For she wouldn't be kept, not even in hell, which are right for lol, titty for lol, while the doll, the doll, the doll, the doll. There were seven years going in and coming back, right for right for titty for lay. There were seven years going and nine coming back, yet she asked for the scrap and she left her the pot, which are right for lol, titty for lol, while the doll, the doll, the doll, the doll. So it's true that the women are worse than the men. Right for right for titty for lay. It's true that the women are worse than the men. When they wouldn't be kept, not even in hell, with your right for lol, titty for lol. Fal la 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 Now, put in your peeper and smoke it. Bye bye, thank you. Thank you, Matt. And we would like to point out that views expressed in songs or poems are not necessarily the views of the performers. Now, I've been a little bit envious of Matt's videos from the past. And I've gone searching and I found a video of myself reading. Now, it's only from 20 18. So it's not very old. But it is from Guildford, Surrey, where I was a guest of 
Janice and Donal, who run a regular reading session there and also publish books. And I read at one of their sessions. That seems like a long time ago, when we were able to travel freely without any fear of viruses. But that time will come again, and maybe quite soon. So here's a poem from me, reading in Guildford, Surrey. I hope you enjoy it. I mentioned archaeology, and in my latest collection, I have a number of poems based on archaeology. There's a summer archaeological school in Trim County Meath where I live, where students from all over the world, particularly from colleges in America, come to excavate an old monastery. And it's, it's fascinating to see these young college students uh, excavating, especially excavating the graveyard part, so that they have to excavate the, the skeletons of old people, but also tiny skeletons of young babies as well. This was the, the monastery, or the town even, graveyard. And I was speaking to a few of them, and one of them told me of a, of a, a grave she excavated of an infant that seemed to have too many shroud pins. So I thought, you have to write a poem about that, and it's written in the voice of the archaeologist. An Infant Burial. Infants take much longer. Their bones fragile, faint, more difficult to dig. I spent two days with makeup, brush and trowel, while my workmate recorded progress, drew each bone of the emerging skeleton. When I had finished every scrap on view, I joined the other diggers, who one by one had left their cuts to stand above it, stare in admiration or remembrance. Some judged age, agreed on two. I didn't care by then, worn out. Spent that restless night brushing soil from friendly skulls, staring at their smiles. Next morning, back at the site, I analyzed my finds tray, shocked to count so many shroud pins, tarnished and slight, ten from my burial. We searched and found the book suggested that the norm was four, and our past experience on this ground confirmed that. It was worrying. Although I had been methodical, I may have missed an infant, failed to notice the ghostly trace of decay. But it was time to lift, bag bones for later lab work. On my knees that evening, packing the final flimsy pieces in their label bags, I realized these desolate parents, the care these desolate parents took to wrap their transient gift. How well they sealed its shroud with abundant pins to equip the body for its long and silent wait until we reverently raised it up. Next, we go back to the Matt and Dolores CD recorded at home in Moyahar, near Trim, in, on a Sunday afternoon in July 1985. And this piece is Handles Where'er You Walk. And a feature of this is the piano playing by Dolores, Matt's wife. And with it, I've put a video of a favourite walk around Trim, Rathnally Lane, which is particularly nice at this time of the year. So we leave you with this, and we hope you've enjoyed our offering and our selections for this week. So until we see you again, please take care, have a good time, and God bless. Sit.
Thank you.